Hi folks, Scott here, and this is the wrap for Wednesday, June 26th. So this is a daily chart, real interesting price action going on here since we broke below the 50 uh, day moving average, which is this blue line. We've actually uh, sold off and then done a sort of a V bottom here with two back-to-back -back dojis and unfilled up gaps. Um, I, I can guarantee you that is very rare right there without even testing it. Um, so I did not test it because the sample size would be too small. But going into tomorrow, I thought it would be helpful to at least show you the results of fading gaps after two consecutive unfilled up gaps in any market condition. I had to loosen those parameters to include any market condition because it's just so rare uh, when above the 200-day moving average, frankly. This normally happens um, during extraordinarily weak markets um, below a 200. But um, nonetheless, it's information and uh, food for thought going into tomorrow. So let me show that those results to you. So back to back unfilled up gaps, fading the subsequent gap. Drum roll. Over the past uh, 11 years or so, it has occurred uh, 40 times. 50 50 in terms of which way it's likely to gap on the subsequent day. Using an end of the day stop, 18 of 20 down gaps have filled on the next day. Um, and on the other side of the coin, 16 of 20 um, gaps up have filled the next day. So uh, high odds of gap filled tomorrow, which tends to uh, generally support the idea of a consolidation day. You've moved very far, very fast. So bulls are ready to take profits if we get a gap up, uh, like in those profits where. Uh, the shorts um, are ready to bail, uh, see it as a gift because the two unfilled up gaps are seen as a bullish scenario. So um, pretty good setup if we can have a decent sized gap tomorrow. Very interesting and uh, somewhat rare. All right. Uh, as always, I'll rerun those numbers for our members in the morning using our MTG stop parameters. Let me show you the worksheet going into today. It's the summation of all eight individual indices gap guides. And you can see we gapped, ab um, well, we gapped above the highs. And you can see that that was a 50-50 trade for fading the gap. So no wedge, not bad, not good, just a dead break-even strategy using MTG stop parameters. That means no thank you for me. Unique day factors, there were none. Unique patterns uh, after an unfilled up gap, up gaps are yucky. Up gaps after a doji during um, similar market condition below a 10, above a 200, uh, almost as yucky. And decent sample sizes and just neutral after what I call a hammer candlestick. All those are defined down here. So clearly showing not worth trading. So it was an easy pass for me. Um, I showed well, what I showed in last night's wrap. I finished that up. It was a small sample size. And then see medium to large up gaps. I defined as 20% of the 5D ATR in size after closing up by at least 70.75%. So three quarters of 1% during similar market conditions also just poor. So just no way I was going to touch shorting an up gap. None of the data supported it. Um, so for me, while these gaps could fill because this market has been so weak, it's such an extraordinary fast move uh, of late, I had to be open minded to that. I said I'd be looking for long opportunities after the open. Uh, is basically the better bias to take today. So, whoops. That's what I did, but I had to follow the data. And as luck would have it, which we've had a couple, of t I think twice this week now, while I had a long bias, the data came out in favor of the short side on a 15-minute uh, low range breakout. And it worked beautifully in the Russell. 15-minute range, that purple line there. Um, and was almost perfect in the low breakout. Let me show you what I mean. My target was 1581.50. In fact, let me show you the data to show you how compelling it was favoring the low range breakout. I'm looking for 55 and 1.1 of the low breakout for 15 minute ranges. Check, check, check. Missed about 1 100. That's close enough. Check. 4 for 4. Look at ETFs. Check, check. Uh, leans that way clearly and checks. So seven of the eight, I had to fade it. So I set up the low breakout, 15 minute um, range trade and target at 1581.50 because it was a five. What was it? Oh, actually, I went. It triggered right afterwards before I was ready. So I waited for a trigger the second time. Went in on the second time. Um, with a break of the low, so I only went for five and a, five points even, because I had three ticks of a delayed entry, if you will, and only used about I only used a five points top. I did not think that was necessary. 
Markets sold off, went right to my target at 1581.50. And as my luck would have it, I actually got filled. The problem was I had brokerage problems with one of my brokers. Had to switch at the last minute to another platform. Bracket orders weren't set up correctly, didn't realize it. And I had uh, I set up the first half of five and the rest was some big number. So I got filled at plus five, the absolute low of the day. Then I realized, hey, I'm still short with half the position. So unfortunately... Um, after it bounced around a while, I got concerned. Close it out for plus two and a half. So an average of whatever that is, plus uh, three and three quarter points. So not a bad trade. Um, high breakout I set up in the ES got triggered long at 1580. Uh, and it rode up three and a quarter points. You can see the high was 1601 and a quarter. Not close enough to trigger my proximity rule. But once we got back to 3 of correction 4 p.m. Eastern time, I could close it out. Now, the gotcha was set up, I thought, pretty good uh, for the close. So I decided not to um, close it out at the cash close instead of hold on to it and use a two-point stop. And I got stopped out for minus two. So, you know, for all intents and purposes of a scratch trade, I just try to sort of turn it into an end-of-day gotcha trade. That didn't work. Lost two on that. I did take the gotcha and got stopped out for minus two three on that. That was disappointing. Got just a long trade into the close. Um, folks, I got to get that. So anyhow, that was my day. Um, a little bit of a tricky and uh, frustrating day. Uh, the one thing I did note on the gap gotcha was that we were inside of the day's range. We were not at new highs. And normally these gotchas are going to work best when everything is trading near its highs. This action, end of day action, was pretty good. Unfilled gap, etc. Russell did fill, and it was inside of its range. So that was a strike against it. And, you know, this is just a tricky market condition and right now. Bulls and bears are very anxious, to say the least. And the um, you know, best advice I can give you on these gotchas, pick entries carefully. And you do not want to give them a lot of room. If they're going to work, they generally don't run against you more than a few points. So I want to keep that in mind. As you can see, once you get momentum, they sort of continue that way. And let's see. Um, that was it. Uh, you know, probability trade-wise, actually was net profitable. Uh, actually, that may not be true because I have traded a little bit bigger position size on the high breakout. That was a better setup to me. So lost a little bit less than I made there. That's, that was not a true statement. But not a bad day. Just, uh, you know, trading's um, sometimes the days are good, sometimes they're bad, sometimes they're just blah. Today was sort of a blah day in my mind. Lost a little bit of money. Uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings us, though. So uh, there you go. That is the wrap for Wednesday, June 26th.